Carly Samuelson is here. We're going to talk about how she got here. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi there, everyone, and happy Thursday to you. I'm Howard Magdal, host of Locked On Women's Basketball. I want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. Six days a week, you guys tune in over 100,000 listeners each of the last two months, and we're on track to break our record here in June. So thank you for making us such a part of your day. Not just me, of course, everyone over at thenexthoops.com, the next where we cover women's basketball 24-7, over 100 reported pieces every month, and again, over 800,000 readers this month alone. Incredible to see you guys responding. Thank you for being part of it. If you're not a subscriber yet, go ahead and subscribe. $9 a month, $72 a year, thenexthoops.com. And something we have done a lot at The Next is write about the basketball exploits of Carly Samuelson, not not just your time on Ryan's Ryan's play. No, it's Ryan's what? Ryan's Ryan's mystery play day. Ryan's right. mystery play day. And we have a story in our archives back in the high post tubes days about it. But uh, it's not well known necessarily. But you also play basketball professionally, not just on Ryan's mystery play day. Is that correct? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I, I, I want to talk about, and in segment one, it's going to be about your road to get here. Because for the listeners at home, I'm sure they are well aware, but you are uh, lighting the lead on fire this year. And it's been a long time in coming as a point of personal privilege as somebody who covered you dating back to the Stanford days. To see this happen, to see you get those regular minutes is significant. So I want everyone to understand how you got there. In segment two, we're going to talk about what it has meant this year for you, for the Sparks. And I, I'm just really curious to dig into that as well. But just to start, there's a, a number. And, and you know, I knew this having done them individually. But um, Tukney Wynn wrote a terrific piece I thought about you in the L.A. Times last week. And the stat is and, and this just blows my mind. You had been through eight hardship and seven day contracts, eight hardship and seven day contracts. So for you, there seems to be a certain understanding of what you're capable of doing. You've shown it other places. But how hard was it to navigate the emotional space through all of that, all of the stops and starts? Yeah, it's I mean, a hardship, a temporary contract at is like a feat in itself. Like a lot of people go through it in this league because of the state of roster spots and the number of players that we all know can play and deserve a spot in this league. So I know uh, plenty of other players have have gone through different situations as well. I have signed quite a bit of them. Um, And I think a few of them have been longer than others, which is always nice. Like I think two years ago with the Sparks, they were different hardships um, that I ended up signing, but I was there for a total of like two months in a row. Um, it's difficult because you don't know when. Yeah, I didn't know from the beginning I was going to be there for two months. So yeah, you just kind of have to enjoy it as it comes. And and I'm someone that kind of slots into a team quickly because I can pick up things. Um, I can kind of play at different positions. I'm versatile. So I think maybe that's why it's it's happened to me like that. But um, Howard, I also hadn't been to a camp in three years because COVID and then I played in Spain till like mid-May the past couple of years. So this was my first year that I've gotten to be at a full camp. Um, So I was really excited um, about the the possibility of making a roster at the beginning. (laughs) And and it makes sense. But, you know, and, and Kurt Miller called you the ultimate substitute teacher, which is an interesting statement like you know it's a mixed blessing obviously in that sense to me and I you know remembering you coming out of school you were an excellent three-point shooter your first two years at Stanford you were an elite elite 
three-point shooter your last two years, going and shooting almost 50% in each of your final two seasons there from deep. That alone is a skill that's obviously necessary in this league. But I also think we are dealing with a lead, and you, you alluded to it, but a lead where rosters can only be 12 and oftentimes 11 deep, that a skill that is necessary, that is vital as we're living in this positionless moment in the WNBA is something that people are not necessarily saying, all right, this is what we need on our roster day in and day out. And so uh, to me, it's like, all right, there's a lot of conversation about rosters need to be bigger, but from a basketball perspective alone, don't they need to be bigger to make sure that skills that are central to the way the league plays now are a part of what every roster does? And you're not just looking for, you know, players who can do four different things, five different things. Yeah. Um, and I think skill set wise, yes. Health of players' bodies also okay. every single year. I think every year the record of number of hardships across the league is increasing. Um and that's due to injuries. That's what you sign a hardship for. And so when you are requiring a roster to be under 10 to sign a replacement player, like sometimes either that player is flying in same day, that's for the hardship player itself. It's probably not the healthiest, but for the players that, and when players sign the same day, usually you're not going to touch the floor. So that mm -hmm. team is still playing with only nine or eight, maybe, you know? And yeah. so, that there's a lot of games we're adding games within the season right it's the most games have ever been played so i think there's so many factors about it it's it's inevitable that hardships are going to be signed when almost every team is only having 11 people yeah i mean before you even get into the like you know a virus sweeps a team like it's happened in la and then you guys are dealing with this and scrambling it game in and game out but the other part of it to me that's frustrating is it feels so hopelessly reactive, right? To set up a system with a hard cap, with a small, and to my mind, and I think to many people's mind, an insufficient number of people as well, that it you're set up for a system that's going to require these things instead of having something proactive. And I, and I guess to even have you put on your um, lead cap for a second, we're, 15 is a reasonable number. 15 is where we're looking at in the NBA, right? 15, you're suddenly in a very different position if a number of people get injured because, look, the rotation is going to be, you know, eight, nine, depending on any given night. So at 15, you have some options. You have some choices, right? Is, is that where the number needs to get to and soon? Yeah, I don't – obviously, it's – the. The way the league is going, there's been some amazing improvements. So with the, the CBA, it, I think it's, we have the option to opt out at the end of this year. So no matter what, like improvements are coming. I feel like we're at a tipping point in women's sports as, as a whole, like across sports. Um, and it's just going the right way, media coverage wise, different, like lots of different things. So I don't make those decisions, <laughs> but as someone that has signed a lot of hardships and I actually right. play a lot of minutes on those hardships. Of, of course, I would love to see a, a bigger number in roster size just because why, no matter what, hardships are being signed. So number of teams also would be lovely, like just yeah. creating more opportunities for jobs for mm. women to play in the States, I think is huge. I, it is vital. And and again, you talk about jobs and it just goes back to it for me that, and, and I don't mean to make the NBA comparison per se, right? But I just, when you think about what does a team look like what, you know, at the NCAA level too, you know, I, there's, there's simple mathematics that play a part, I think, when it comes into this stuff. And the jobs thing is just, it's very hard for me not to think about an NBA with 30 teams at 15 apiece, and that's 450 jobs, and then another 29 G League teams. And, you know, you're talking eight, 900 domestic jobs, you know, to play basketball compared to let's be charitable, 136, 137, you know, depending on which teams are at 12, which teams are at 11. And so that's part of it for me. But here's another part. And it goes back to, to me, what's remarkable about your career and what you've done. You were undrafted coming out of school. There are no shortage of players I've seen, I've covered, who you can play in the WNBA. It's clear to me. Player goes undrafted and pursues another line of work. 
Um, I don't mean to um, presume, but somebody with a Stanford degree probably has other options available to her, right? So did was that something that crossed your mind at any point during this journey that, you know, there were there are a lot of things Carly Samuelson can go do and be successful at? Yeah, I, it's funny when I went, when I chose to go to Stanford, obviously my older sister played there. So it was great to play with her and I'm a California girl. So I wanted to stay West Coast, but sure. I never had plans to play at all after college or play pro. Like it wasn't in my thought process. Um, until, you know, I got to the very end and I was like, I really like this. Um, I didn't get drafted and I was, I just watched the draft. I, I don't really know if you had to put your name in. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but I got invited to Sparks Camp and I was super excited about it. And it was more just like, this is so cool. I'm going to go like be around like these professional players. I'm from LA, you know, um, I had a phenomenal camp. I shot like I shot just like I was coming out of college, like I made every three um, at the time and I broke my foot at the end of it. And because I, I felt like I, I was going to make the team if I didn't break my foot, I got a taste of, oh, I can do this. And that kind of in the rest of my pro career, how it's gone has just been the balls just rolled in a way where I've found like stepping stones to keep going up like and then I made the sparks the next year another year I got cut but I went and played in the euro basket with Great Britain and I did really well in that euro basket and with that visibility I got signed by a top euro league Spanish team right. um and just from there like it's just I'm going with the flow Howard like it, it's gone in a way I really see though why people that you know you either get cut from a team right away you go overseas I didn't like my first year why it kind of stops and then you go a different direction. Um, I love basketball, so I'm very grateful that it has, and I work hard too. So I think there's a combo of things, but it just uh, opportunities have just kept rolling for me to keep playing. It, it's been exciting to see from afar. And we're going to get into those in segment two. But first, Locked On Women's Basketball is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Now, Bird dogs are pants, shorts. They make you look good. I am I know that's a subjective statement. I'm saying specifically, my wife is very happy with when I wear them, which is the only, frankly, fashion statement that I am concerned about making work. Bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, I am told, but fit way better. They fit better than regular shorts that are a stiff, restricting cotton. I can tell you for a fact they are very comfortable. You get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird dogs use the technology that keep you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. I can recommend it. I've, I've had several different beverages since I had with that Yeti style tumbler. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. So we are back talking in segment two about the Carly Samuelson journey. And so I do want to throw a couple of stats out there because I think it's worth noting, you know, to go play in Spain and Avenida is one thing. It's another thing to raise your level in the games that matter most. And so I just want to point out in the 21-22 season, you were at 38.3% from three during uh, domestic play. You jumped to 43.8 during EuroLeague. You, you found that the stiffer competition not only didn't seem to slow you down, but it raised your game. And I wonder what you think it was about that that allowed you to find another level and what do you feel like you discovered about yourself in the process? Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't know those exact stats, but um, my uh, Avenida, we, we were really good. So uh, maybe it was, I mean, I love the big moments. I love the big games. I love tough competition. So maybe it was those games where we're up by 20, 30, you know, I was playing 20 minutes a game. We rotated a lot. We played all over the floor. It was so much fun mm -hmm. um, that, Maybe I'm just not as locked in because we're up by a dis 
20, you know what I mean? But I know my team really needs me um, to make a shot. I think I feel that and I'm in the heat of the game when it's competitive. Maybe it's that. Um, I, I definitely love those those big moments. And obviously it carried over into your work with the WNBL and playing for Townsville. Um, I'm, I'm just looking, do we have time? I'm going to make a list of all the players who um, went 60, 40, 90 in the history of the WNBL. I'm going to see if I can squeeze that list in between now and the end of the show. Um, the list is you, and that is the end of the list. So, <laughs> you know, from that perspective, I, I'm just wondering, did you find something mechanical? Was there something that has allowed you to elevate? Obviously, you know, getting open, getting those shots, uh, you are a shooter. As we talked about, you have always been a shooter, but those are crazy numbers, even for you. Oh, yeah. I, I credit that my past season in the WNBL to my coach, Shannon Seabom, for sure. Like the setup of his system um, was just perfect for me. My and, and again, credit to my teammates as well, mm -hmm. uh, finding me. Um, WNBL, there's a lot less games than I'm used to in Europe. There's only one league, so every game is important. Um, I really like the competition. There's only 21 regular season games, so you know you're excited to play the games because you've been practicing all week. So um, yeah, but credit to them, like it, it was super fun. Um, no, I don't think anything mechanical. Um, just confidence too. My, he he gave me a lot of confidence, and I was an import for the first time. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I took on that responsibility like differently than just being a European player on a team. Um, but I had a lot of fun. It's really interesting. I, I mean, and again, it's at every point, it seems as if you've stepped up to the challenge that's been provided to you. And, and, and again, I, I just feel like that parallel experience overseas continued right here uh, in the WNBA so far. So, you know, so far this season, it's not just that you're getting a chance to play extended minutes. Uh, I you know, went back to look. You had over five seasons from 2018 through 2022, you know, 2020 not inclusive. You had 79 field goal attempts total. And you've had 53 of them already here so far this year. You know, it's not just about three starts or getting on the floor. You're getting an opportunity to get into the flow offensively. The, you know, the numbers reflected too in terms of your efficiency, I guess, and, and I don't know if there is an answer to this, but is there a moment in a game, is there a number of shots where you start to feel that flow uh, when you're playing? Um, I think just this year being with the team from start, like camp to, yeah, there was a couple of days where I wasn't, but um, is, you know, I've been in the rotation consistently, you know, fluctuating minutes, but I think that's what it is. That's the flow. Um, I'm not one, I feel uncomfortable to be honest with you, taking more than like 10 shots a game. It's not really like my, my thing, uh, obviously WNBL, I took maybe around there, but, um, yeah. I, I, I just like to go with the flow of the game. Honestly, I, I take my open shots. I, sometimes I, after games, I'm like, I need to shoot when I'm open or even if I'm not that open because that's my job, uh, mm -hmm. I'm a shooter. So I push myself to take the shots that they come to me. I, I suspect, and I can't tell you this for sure, but if you keep shooting 60, 40, 90 in seasons, your coaches are probably going to ask you to take more than 10 shots a game. I think that that, <laughs> that might be a consequence. I just wanted you to be prepared for that. Um, <laughs> the, the specific moment where you found out that LA, because you were there, and I, I know this is complicated for our listeners, but just you know, to go from injury replacement to essentially some shifting around that meant um, that you were able to stay for longer, that you had a little bit of stability here this year. Um, take me through where you were, who you heard from, and, you know, just what that was like for you to be able to get that kind of validation. Oh, my gosh. It was like the first time I've ever had a good, you know, principals off meeting, <laughs> office meeting. Um, it was yeah, I, I just got called by the coach and GM and they, they told me, you know, you, you've done great. You deserve it. Um, you know, keep keep working hard, like keep doing your thing. Basically, um, here's your chance and mm -hmm. opportunity. And yeah, I went into this year in camp like saying, you know, whatever happens, I'm going to be OK with it because that's just the way you got to be with WNBA. Um, and uh, obviously I was really hurt because I felt like I had a good chance. And then, yeah, I just on the first couple of games, I just 
played because I got a chance and it was fun. And that's what I'm still doing. I, I really hope us to get back in the win column, like winning, losing sucks. So winning is fun. I want to help us win games. Um, but I'm definitely like playing minutes is so fun. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm having a great time. That's awesome. And, and, and it clearly shows. And so even to bring it full circle in segment three, we're going to talk about just the concept of home and what it means. Uh, first, want to let the people at home know about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. So you mentioned that the Sparks are close to home. And I wonder, the, the Sparks have a player she played um, with the same last name, uh, Katie Lou Samuelson. Is she, are, are, do you know her? Is she re any relation? Yeah, I know her a little bit. <laughs> It, I I just feel like and and your your careers have overlapped in these fun ways you know again and again and again but and and I, Katie Lou's been on the show and we've talked about this as well about just this concept of like doing this at home and you know for you to not just have this breakthrough the, but to be able to do it among family just. Take me through what that's like before games, after games, and how much more spectacular that feels just emotionally. Yeah, it's, we have an off day today and I'm at home at my parents' house. It's like the, it's honestly a dream to play at home, to be able to get paid to play at home. And and I've gone, this will be my, I'll be going over for my seventh season overseas. So when I'm away from home for, you know, seven eight months of the year it's really nice to be able to keep playing but do that at home go home on my off days obviously Lou is pregnant this season but she's on the team as well so she's there every home game every practice and I get to spend a lot of time with her so I'm family's really big to us so that's that's huge for me and specific to that when you kind of think about two things one it seems very obvious to me that despite all your travels this is home to you. This is the concept of home to you, right? I mean, th that this feels as comfortable as any place on earth for you, right? Yeah, 100%. It's where my family is. I have I have to say, though, I've had incredible experiences overseas sure. where I played in Spain and Salamanca for three seasons um, with most of the same girls. And then my past season in Townsville, um, I would say that I kind of feel like I have different homes in those places now and and I really like to commit um when when it's a good feeling and a good team culture um I really like invest in it and I live my life I don't like to just you know go somewhere and and wait around you know like it's just a job um and it's obviously fun when you win and have success so that's um uh, that's part of it too but uh, I have great relationships with my teammates um all over the world so I'd say People are my home, um, but yeah, uh, where my family is, my sisters, my parents. Uh, I love that. that uh, people are my home is as good a definition of it as I've heard from anyone. So that makes a lot of sense. I, when you think about the future, do you allow yourself to think about roots? Do you allow yourself to think about that? Uh, um, are, is the hope, I guess, that this is a basketball home you can call home for a long time to come or is the just the nature of the beast means that it really is something that you have to continue to take it you know a game at a time yeah um I mean, life is short in itself. And then like basketball life is like this, right? So I, I've been playing for, you know, I played since I was super young, but mm -hmm. pro, this is my seventh year. Um, I'm just taking it in as it's coming. Um, and I think I know that it's short. And when I say short, it could be five more years. It could be one more year. Like, um, but I'm enjoying every moment of it. Um, I'm 
seeing the world also and I'm meeting a lot of people and um, I'm just trying to be present in those moments to enjoy it so that when I am done I look back and I know that like I did enjoy it to the fullest because it's a really cool thing. It really is. Well, Carly Samuelson, it's always great to chat with you. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, thank you on behalf of our listeners as well. To our listeners, thank you, as I've said before, for making us such a destination for women's basketball every day. And we have another treat coming your way tomorrow. The great Jackie Powell will be hosting. And Ari Chambers, one of America's greatest humans, will be on the show talking about All Star, talking about all the things she's doing. Uh, so I can't wait for that as well. Um, until then, listeners, uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Locked on Women's Basketball. I'm Howard Megdahl, wishing you all a wonderful Thursday. Welcome to Wallet. For the win. You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. 